Hi, I'm Matt from HockeyReviews.ca and today we are reviewing a pair of pads that are totally different from any other pad I've ever seen and any other pad I've used and really totally different from my normal preferences. But that's okay because I can totally figure out the point of these and I can feel why they're the way they are and the idea behind them and they're very interesting. So huge thank you to Dennis from Factory Mad, that's what these are, the Factory Mad Proto Pads. They're crazy, they're ridiculous. Uh, we're going to talk about them in length as well as show some gameplay of me using them and just do some tests with them and stuff like that, which will be in separate videos. Like we'll do the thigh rise test in separate in a separate video. We won't do the rebound test because I don't have the radar machine anymore, but the rebounds on these are super dead anyways. But we will do that thigh rise test in a different video to kind of split up just because this will be long enough as it is. We'll also have a separate video on the knee guards themselves, which are very unique and they're really well made just to straight out there uh, these will be separate themselves just because again splitting this up a little bit but these knee guards do basically go with these pads in terms of their design philosophy and kind of the idea behind them so we'll talk about that a little bit when we talk about the actual pad itself but before all that if you want to support the channel i keep doing equipment reviews and making more content and reviews like this please check out the links in the description if you're in canada to hockey supremacy if you're in the u.s to pure hockey clicking those links making a purchase gives me a kickback, helps support the channel. That way I can keep making more content and doing more reviews. Otherwise, check out Patreon and buy me a coffee. Everything through there comes right back into the channel to help fund reviews like this one. So one thing that I did want to say is I did not have a chance to try on the gloves of these. Unfortunately, he didn't have a demo set of the gloves available when these pads became available. So hopefully that will come in the future and I'll get a chance to try his gloves. I've heard wonderful things about them. So hopefully I'll be able to try those and test them out and everything. But for just now, this is just the pads and the knee guards will be in a separate video. So first of all, I mentioned thank you to Dennis. It wouldn't have been possible without him. He has a pretty awesome demo program for this stuff and does some pretty awesome stuff through Factory Mad. And he didn't send these to me to do like a review because he has a demo program, I was able to get them. And like I talked in length with him about these pads and kind of the ideas behind pads and everything like that. And he knew right away basically that these aren't my style of pad, but I hope I reassured him in the sense that I can get a good idea of pads that might not be my preference and why they work and how and stuff like that. So we'll, we'll kind of dive into that a bit here. And just like, a bunch of other gear for pricing and everything uh, you have to email them because the well, one that was their preference is everything is custom so they want you to email them i will say that these are more expensive than a normal retail set of gear and it's just because of the way that this like whole philosophy is but we'll talk about that at the end of the video in the conclusion of like what i recommend these pads type thing so for sizing on this it's really weird because they don't do like a 35 plus one stuff like that they have Basically, they do the actual measurements of your leg. He asks for floor to knee, thigh rise, and I, can't, I think boot size. And that is how he does pad sizing. So someone asked me on Instagram what the size of these pads were. Dennis came back with the response of three measurements. I'll overlay them here of what these ones specifically are, but that is how you get these pads sized. And so it's not like a traditional like 35 plus one type thing. I'm sure you might be able to convert it somewhere, but it's kind of confusing just go by their sizing and Dennis is great to talk to and will help you out with that and explain everything he's very good with that just to get this out of the way really quickly because this is like the big thing for me is pad stiffness now I have been posting the videos about thigh rise failing and stuff like that now this pad is very different from pads I use and I order one the boot is the most ridiculously soft thing ever as you can see it's crazy it's pretty interesting the other thing is the thigh rise is the most ridiculously soft thing I've ever used and I'll probably will ever use unless I get like a pair of Jack Campbell Pro Returns. Um, but super soft, super flimsy, designed for this. That's the point of this pad is to be like this. Obviously this is not my preference. Obviously my preference is this pad. This is basically my perfect build pad. It's a Bauer X Stiff with zero thigh rise movement. That's me trying to pull this down. It's not going anywhere. So again, this isn't what I would normally order and normally use, but everyone talks about them. I had a lot of people ask me to review them and I really want to check them out because they're really interesting. Obviously this is totally different and you can see just how crazy this pad is compared to what I normally wear and is very 
fun to use and it was a very interesting experience. So the other interesting thing about this from like this side, which you can see is this very unique single piece calf and knee wing, I guess. Is it a wing if it's just all one giant piece? Anyways, this like brings back memories of like the blockade days. This isn't NHL legal anymore. I'll get that right out there. It has to be a break, but they can make a break in this. So Dennis has done pads where it does have the knee block and the calf separately. So there is that break there. But the idea of this is also very different compared to, let's say, the Hyperlite, which added a bigger space here so the pad can bend below the knee and like bend that way. But the idea of these pads, and I kind of agree with Dennis in that sense, is that your knee doesn't, like this part of your leg always stays the same. Whenever you're looking at your knee, this part doesn't move. So why would your pad really move in that way? I totally agree because basically all pads interfere right here until the hyperlight because of this. Well, okay, until the, yeah, basically the hyperlight because of this. And like, as you can see that moving, but unless this is strapped, like pulling down, there's no way this is really ever gonna move down there that much or at all. And that kind of comes with this territory as well, where this doesn't have to flex or do anything because this part of your leg is always going to stay the same. So the other thing about these pads, and I mentioned how your knee never like, your leg never bends, so this doesn't matter. This part will flex too, but no matter what your knee's doing and your leg is doing, because this isn't connected anywhere, and honestly with most pads, this isn't ever gonna really collapse. Because even when I'm doing this, which is my knee bent like the most, why would the pad have to bend in that direction? It doesn't really make sense and it doesn't really do anything. So having this kind of design like this does not hinder anything because your leg isn't gonna be moving like that. You need a hinge under your knee that would basically bend this part back to make that any like useful. And it obviously doesn't hinge like that. The other thing is, is how soft this boot is and how it totally moves with your foot and it totally flattens out and I've shown it flatten out, but this is how it feels on the skate and it moves with your skate all the time and it's a really unique feeling compared to other things I've worn and it honestly does it better than any other pad I've worn. But I'm from what I've been told, the construction of this boot means this won't collapse anymore and how it is is how it is. So even if it's super small, it's not gonna collapse down and get smaller over time. So a pad that has a pretty interesting boot too, so this boot flattens out pretty good too. That's like the max it will go. And it does, but it does move more than that. It's just the pad doesn't, isn't as connected on your leg as compared to the factory mad one is. But this is a good example of kind of down here, that brake. The only way that brake does anything and ever moves is as you can see, is if the thigh rise is pulled down. Now, there's no strap on here that could pull that thigh rise up here down. The only strap you could even do is from here to the outside wing. And that at best would pull it into you. And then you might be able to pull it just a tiny bit, but your leg is never gonna bend like that. And even when I'm going like this, you can see this isn't moving. It's staying the same position. So the, that single design and like losing that flexibility here doesn't really do anything. I don't understand why there's a break here and factory mad pads kind of show that too because that's never going to do anything again unless you go from up here and push down. So just stiffen that up and then when pucks hit here too, that's going to be stiffer and create a straight line and it would be better as well. But this is a, kind of an example of a pad that does have a little bit of give here and move, but you can't use it when you're actually wearing the pad without something here pulling it down. So just of like a notice and size comparison of these. And like I said, the sizing is weird, but we're gonna just talk about it to show these off. These pads are like basically an inch too small. These are a large, I need an XL. These fit me perfectly, especially on the knee. So when I switch that over, you can kind of see that inch of a knee difference basically right there. And honestly, that is exactly how they play. And I landed right in the middle and it fit me exactly how it should have when I was using them and so it was perfectly expected. So me giving Dennis my leg sizing ended up fitting perfectly right here and with the skate boot size and everything like that. So we look at the sliding side here and you can see again that crazy thing kind of up close in this uh, calf slash knee wing right here. And you can see just how the inner edge is as well. So nothing like crazy going on here besides this in terms of like materials or like weird slats or anything like that compared to some other companies. but it's okay and that's honestly it makes sense before we jump into kind of all this strapping and stuff we're just going to take a look at like the perimeter outside of the pad and on the face you'll also notice something really weird here too and how it has no outer roll as you can see a lot of pads are going to a more slimmer design optics uh, on brines were one of them warriors on the previous versions were kind of one of them they kind of went the other way around here is one where it completely gets rid of it you can see the face 
is totally flat and it looks really weird and it's really strange personally i like the rolls i'm sure you can put rolls on here and it makes sense i like the rolls only because it does like how warrior says does take up kind of a little extra space when you're in like this with that roll it does make the angle that has to go over your pad a little higher and i have had pucks on my optics specifically hit that roll like the tip of it and kind of roll over whereas i've seen the same on ones without that like smaller roll like the g5 or the bowers which have an angled one keep pucks out when it hits that so it's i do prefer it but again they do custom they can do it if you want it this is just their design and idea philosophy here rebound on these pads is like non-existent the pad is so soft the boot is so soft and like flexes with you when pucks hit this i was so surprised that i like how dead the rebounds were i took a few shots that were pretty hard hit the pad and i'm like uh and i didn't know where they were because i'm expecting the big rebound it was just dead so this is a very different type of design compared to what i'm used to but with how soft this is i want to call it out because the idea again going back to this idea of these pads is more of the reactive than blocking type of goalie right and the play style of like anyone can use this i'm a blocking goalie and i could use these pads fine generally speaking the people who do have like the pad with the boot that's this soft and like the thigh rise that are this soft want that softer rebound so that's kind of ties into what this is when you go on the outside edge you can see really how crazy thin this pad is and it's pretty insane and, and like really interesting this has to be the thinnest core pad i've ever seen i know warriors have been like really thin and everything too but this really does feel like nothing else it's just the way this is, sits on your leg and everything i really believe that the thinness of this really kind of helps with that as well and just with the strapping and everything as a whole package obviously also these are a demo set and they're very very used and you can kind of see some of the wear on the toe binding and stuff but Again, demo set, super used, it makes sense. It does look obviously really weird and everything on here with no outer roll, like you can never really tell what the outside is or the inside without obviously looking on the inner sides, but it just, it, it's just so strange to look at and it just gets me every time. Whenever I see this set, it just kind of blows me away. Face and everything is just a total, you can do custom graphics and stuff, but total flat face everywhere, no binding going through at all. And a pretty interesting design from that standpoint. Thigh rise on this is like the whole thing's really soft, obviously, and the pad's soft and it feels soft, and the core isn't super, super stiff. But I will say this this is stiffer than some of the retail pads I've seen of recently or like in the recent past. And that's kind of surprising considering how soft this pad is, that this actually is a bit stiffer and feel well it definitely feels way better constructed i'll say that straight off the bat but it definitely feels a little bit stiffer than what some of those other retail pads are most of my pads are all stiffer than this because i order them stiffer throughout the core and everything for durability and for for pucks but i'm actually surprised how soft this is and that that isn't even softer so before we get to the fun and meaty part of this we'll come back to this boot which is pretty soft you can kind of squish it and it fits pretty awesome on your foot and it just feels like it's totally connected to your foot uh, I'm sure you can do different toe ties and stuff like that, but this toe tie is just like this attachment right here with foam and the toe ties are like this and that's it. The one thing I will say, I do like how well these are just made, just everything on here is super quality. It's going to be a continuing theme with factory mad stuff. The quality is excellent and like top notch and with how flexible this boot is and with the kind of interesting boot design. So it does have a little thing here. This is for the boot strap, which was included on these pads and they're currently both attached to this one because I use it to carry the pads, but elastic bootstrap, that is kind of the same connection point as what on the toe ties. And it just goes through right here. And you can see how the boot is designed with kind of this nylon piece here, Gen Pro here for durability, and then a little bit of a riser, but just really for padding on like the front of your skate and your shin. And you can see Velcro back here and it's Velcro's you can kind of like velcro it off i'm not going to velcro that off because this part is kind of tied in here but we'll talk about that a little later on but it's kind of a hint when i wore this this was worn really tight to my skate just kind of how the idea of this pad is this was kind of just standard through the middle or through the front loop through the middle and then this piece i usually don't use a boot strap but this was like a middle strap and not like a heel and just kept this right on my foot and it really does allow this pad and kind of the boot to really move totally like dependent on your foot and with your foot and it's really interesting and it's a really 
different idea than a lot of pads today that have a totally flat, like this is pretty flat, but the idea of them is just sit like kind of on top and away from a skate. This one is to move with your skate and it's honestly very interesting and it feels fantastic when you're playing with it. So I gotta give them a ton of credit for that because it really does move with you and it really feels like it's really connected to you and you really feel that all the time. Moving on to the back, this is kind of like what the awesome thing and the really unique thing about this pad is. It's kind of how all this works together. So we're gonna start at the kind of boring part, which is the actual knee block and stacks here. And it's very open, as you can see, with no wing. You can add a wing in there. It's very easy. There's all these little ties. But these ties are also for another thing as well. You can see right here that this entire knee section can be moved inside this kind of, it can be moved around, right? And this part, and as you can see, when you unvelcro all these, which is a piece there and a piece there, this whole thing can be adjusted. You can replace the foams in here, but this can untie. So this basically ties in all the way through here. You can untie it and move it up and down or like that way if you really wanted to. You can adjust these a lot and that's really awesome. That's kind of what I hinted at at the boot where these pads are super adjustable in terms of how you want them to kind of be. And when you buy like a U set of these pads, you could easily send them to Dennis and get them to like redo some of these to, to be like kind of your spec and your idea. That's pretty interesting. So it's like these things could be made to last over and over again because of how like this is, this is just made and designed because you can fix it to be how you want it or you can totally change it up and use the same actual core over and over again, which is a really interesting idea. And I'm honestly a pretty big fan of it. If you want to change these up with different pillows, you can do that. And everything is changeable through here. And it's pretty straightforward from what I can understand. It does Velcro on the inside. We'll take a look at that when we look at the shin. But that is kind of the idea behind like the knee or anything. Obviously this is all super soft. And this part doesn't like stick through the core like Bauer and now Von do. That's not the idea of this pad. So when we go back in there, you can really see how that kind of overlaps with this pillow too. And the other interesting thing about this is that there is no knee strap. Obviously, you could add one in here that goes down to here, but there's really no need to. So this makes a lot of sense, and I never fell out of the block on this once when using it. This like sat on my leg better than any other pad I've ever worn did. It just felt like perfect and natural, and because of just how this entire design and kind of idea is. When I wear my pads, I always have to use a strap here basically to keep things tight, except for Warriors where I have to wear it here to pull the pad up, and same with my Hyperlights too. Actually, I have to wear it there too to help pull the pad up but with pads that fit me correctly it's always to the knee so my knee doesn't blow off the top and kind of in desperation saves and stuff like that with this design because this is always so wrapped in your leg you don't have to worry about this your knee just stays in there because the rest of your leg is staying in there the other thing too is this wing is pretty soft like you can bend it pretty easily and you do notice that when you're actually wearing it and like you could definitely feel moving with your leg kind of like this unlike the solid block pads like the hyperlights or any bower pad and a lot of like the retail pads where they're stiffening this up for like stability and stuff that's not the case here this does really move with you but unlike pads that have softer kind of pieces here using the past like the pass out the way that this all works with your leg, it doesn't feel unstable. You can feel it moving with your leg, but it feels like it's supposed to. Whereas with like, if I leaned too much back like this way on the pass out, it felt like I was falling out of the pad and like this part was kind of just like folding. This never felt like that at all. So it's a very like different idea again and like design philosophy behind pads where this works. Cause I never felt like I was coming off it, never felt in any issue with it whatsoever, but you did feel it moving. And that's kind of the recurring theme on this is feeling this pad moving with your leg. It's a really unique feeling to me specifically cause usually they're kind of not on your leg. They're just kind of around your leg, your leg works in it. Now this pillow is a fantastic, amazing idea. I love calf pillows. I've been pushing for people and companies to add calf pillows since the Optic One. I find it, think it's great. It's great for padding comfort. It's great for cheating to push pads down. It's also great on your hips and knees and stuff, just giving you a little bit more cushioning as well as raising your leg up so it's not a straight, always 90 degree angle. This is a great idea. And working with this knee, it just transitions perfectly and just is really soft. And again, this does help with that stability where this can move, but if your leg's kind of in there secure and everything's nice, you're all good and you don't have to worry about it. So even when you're in the butterfly and like sliding in your leg is like changing where the weight is, although it still feels super stable because of that calf 
like pillow and everything and how it just all sits in. It feels really well and nice on your leg. Now you do have this interesting little padded piece in here, which is honestly for padding because this pad is so thin. This is for padding. I'm not gonna say I got hurt with shots, but I felt shots. Again, not hurt. I just knew exactly where they hit on my leg, which again is slightly different than some other pads would have a really hard face and everything like that that I use normally, where you know it hit the pad, but you couldn't tell exact spot with this. If it hit here, I knew on this side exactly where it hit on my shin. Again, didn't hurt. So no complaints from there. It's just a different idea and different feeling. And this is Velcroed in, as you can see, all the way through here. So you can adjust this as well and replace it. So if these foams do get too like broken down, worn down, or too soft, you can just simply get a replacement piece from Dennis and swap that out. It is tied in down here, but I'm not going to try it, but you can see the tie off right down here too. So you could just untie that so you can pull it all out and you can, again, replaceable pieces, which is an awesome, awesome idea. Gen Pro all throughout the back there because it's all kind of ties in and just normal nylons on here, but with all the availability to strap this wherever you want, which I love. I don't understand why companies have been like limiting the strapping for the Velcro. Just put the Velcro there so you can strap anywhere. So one thing again on this, I kind of want to call out that other companies have kind of gone away from or kind of pointed the opposite direction of is surface area. So this pad has a lot of surface area for you to slide on. Now, according to people in the hockey world, um, this will make a pad slide slower because more surface area means slower. That's not actually how physics work. And I'll bang that drum over and over and over again because there's a formula. This pad doesn't slide amazing. It's not the best sliding pad on the market. There's no doubt about that. It doesn't have fancy materials. You are not going to get a better sliding pad until you lower that coefficient of friction. And the only way to do so is get a material that is a lower coefficient of friction. Bauer has done it with their Cortec. Brian and Vaughn have done it with their quick slide and opti slide. And Warrior in the future is doing it with a plastic piece on their knee block. It, it, they slide okay. They're not amazing. They're not terrible. This has the weave and the weave and eh, slide supposedly a little bit better. I don't find it makes a huge difference, but this slides fine. I When I was using it, I obviously noticed it wasn't on my Optic 2s. It wasn't my SLR 3s. It wasn't my Bauer pads. It didn't slide as well, but I had no issues using them and I never felt like I was too slow moving around in them. And if you really wanted, you can just add that 3M film right here and change that up. But without changing this material to be something crazy, you're not gonna get that crazy sliding on it. Now, the one pad that this kind of reminds me of from a retail standpoint is honestly, and Dennis is gonna hate that I'm going to say this, is a warrior pad. And the reason I'm going to say that is because of how basically the pad moves with your leg so much. I believe though the difference is the idea of that is in this pad. Like this pad is designed to move with your leg. Everything about it is, this is totally attached to your foot and your leg. And like, so it you can feel it moving all the time. I honestly don't believe that's the total idea of the warrior pads, especially because they had a stiff pad and a soft pad where the stiff pad you can like fold over and I can feel it moving all the time. But instead of like this pad where I can feel it moving, but I still feel stable when I'm in my butterfly, the warrior, I don't feel stable in the butterfly compared to this. So I don't feel that was the intention where this one is totally intention to feel like it's totally moving with your leg and kind of flexing with your leg. And that's, that's the point. So Dennis, I'm sorry that I said that, but the reason I'm going to say that is because I really believe a lot of people wearing warrior pads should not be actually wearing warrior pads, but they like the feel of a lot of things in the warrior pads. But at the same time, when I watch them play, it, it just, it's very clear to me that it doesn't work right. And the reason it doesn't work right is because Warrior still has a very, it's a very binary pad where it's either you land like this or you land like this. There's no real in between. And I, this is the pad that I most land like this on. I don't know how, actually I kind of do. It's this little angle thing is really annoying, but this pad, like it does kind of move like with your leg and everything kind of like that, not nearly as much as this does, but it's also not, doesn't feel as stable ever as this does. But I see so many people that like buy these and it's either from the, the weight of them or just like how this allows them to move so much better than like a stiffer pad or other some retail pads. But when I see them play, it's always the same thing and it kind of always gets in the way. The pads just don't work right and don't look right. This would be perfect for them. Now, while I believe that any goalie can wear any style pad, whether you're a blocking goalie, 
whether you're like a super reactive hybrid goalie, as they call it, or old school stand-up goalie, you can get used to stuff and use whatever pad you want. Cam Ward was one of the most reactive goalies ever and wore Bauer pads at the end of his career. And those Bauer pads are by all means really stiff. These are super soft and I can wear, wear these totally fine. And I they worked really well for me and I liked them. And honestly, I would like to like, if I got this different, I would like to use them more and more. But people who are buying these Warriors for that feel of kind of like down here and how it feels on your leg, this thing is going to work so much better for you because these aren't a binary thing where it's like, uh, uh, the thing moves with your leg and it makes sure it rotates right with how this is all designed. And it's just like, this is what that and what people who buy this kind of think this is what they actually want and like what would work so much better for them. Fortunately and unfortunately, factory mad stuff isn't available at retail for people to try. So obviously they'll never get that footing because they're like basically all custom or use on the secondary market but that's just kind of what it is and honestly the amount of people i see that would benefit from this pad is huge i watch it all the time through youtube videos or from just people when i go to the rink this thing would work for so many goalies i hope this video honestly gets people who are thinking about these to really look to like try a set and really go into them because honestly they're gonna work for so many people and do so much better things for people than what some other pads and companies are. And I really hope that like does something to them and gets them in gear that works for them. So speaking of what is on this pad and something that I would change to work for me is the thigh rise drop and how this is made. So Dennis, the thigh rise drop to him is basically like how, where this is shaped. If I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that's what the conversation, it's a few weeks ago, actually it was over a month ago. So I'm paraphrasing here if I'm wrong, Again, I'll apologize and put it in the comments, but the idea is kind of like the curve, what you want from here, and you can do like inches and tell them how much you want, and they'll change kind of the shape and the idea of this. Now, for me, what I would change is I would make this as straight as possible. I love straight pads. You can see it in like the pads I use. I really do like straight pads. I like knowing exactly where that thigh rise is all the time. Yes, you can get used to a curved pad, figure out where it is, but when they're straight, I just know that when I go down, that's where it is. It's a straight line, and I can kind of use it better in my head and kind of just use like angles and stuff like that with the pad a little bit easier and better for myself. Now, the other thing I would change is that thigh rise stiffness. Obviously I like stiff pads, especially above the knee. Below the knee, I'm honestly kind of indifferent to. You can give me a stiff pad, you can give me a soft pad, I don't really care. It's the above the knee that is the big part for me and this thigh rise softness. So I'll overlay some video of footage of pucks hitting this thigh rise and you can see what it does. The very, I think, first goal I had against this pad, either first or second, I can't remember exactly, and I'll show the clip of it. There's a shot that was passed into the slot. A guy, I think, one times it, shoots it from the slot. I go into the butterfly. My pads are like this. I watch the puck hit my thigh rise. I watch the thigh rise bend in like this, and I watch the puck go through my legs. Obviously, this will be a recurring statement of people bringing up that this is the wrong technique and I should have stopped it with one, my stick, or two, I should have had my knees together like this, so the blocks were touching, so then pucks wouldn't go through there. So the reason I kind of hate those arguments is because hockey isn't a binary sport, and it's not just, if you do this, this will work. It's a fast sport. You can't always assume and get your stick in the exact perfect position all the time. Regardless, if you put your stick on there, stick only comes up this high. So if the puck is shot up higher, it's going to hit the thigh rise. The thigh rise has to make the save. So that's disappointing to me. But again, these aren't my design pads. And this is something I would want stiffer. Now, the other thing about this is where people are like, oh, well, if you have your blocks together, pucks won't go in. Okay, well, if you're moving side to side and a player is over there and a player comes over here, if you can slide at full speed like this and just take up as much net as you can with someone sliding like this, by all means, you're God and you should do that. Otherwise, Really good goaltenders like Andre Vasilevsky and Igor Shashurskin, can't say his name, I apologize, and basically everyone else in the NHL uses a wide butterfly with their thigh rises apart from each other and their knees are not touching each other because you can cover more of the low net. And that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to play percentages of shots and cover as much area as possible for a better chance of making a save. Now, these knee guards are a big proponent of these pads because of how bulky they are. They are kind of bulky when I wore them, I definitely notice it, but they're super padded. And the idea is that this thigh rise, if you play it with your knees like this, you can make the saves with your knee pads and you have no issues and you don't need the thigh rises as much. Look, people have different ideas how to goaltend. And this is probably where Dennis and I diverge a little bit. 
I don't think I could ever play this style because again, I'm trying to get more coverage down low to cover those corners and doing this is not gonna cover those corners and doing this is not gonna cover those corners. So what do you do? You do this. But at the same time, you could, I simply and easily could order these with a tall, slightly taller thigh rise, a straighter thigh rise, and I'm not sure how stiff we could get it, but he did say we can do a stiffer thigh rise as well. So I'd be able to get those features of that part of the pad that I want while having kind of the rest of the pad to still be super maneuverable, super soft, and basically feeling like nothing else on the market. And it would be like a pretty insane combination of pad and pretty awesome in that sense. Now, if I were going to make any suggestions on these, just in general, things I would perhaps like to, to change because it wouldn't be a hockey reviews review without me nitpicking stuff and saying things could be slightly better. Uh, the biggest nitpick ever is these straps. Please put a little tab on them, kind of like this. It has destroyed my fingers. My fingers have been ripping and pulling off this stuff all the time, especially when it's tight and I'm kind of digging in there and my skin basically digs and it gets caught up on this and it starts ripping off my skin. So please, it's a super small thing, I know, but if you could please put like a little tab of nylon or something like that, it would be so much easier to just pull off and so much nicer. And like this one doesn't have it, which is annoying, but like these ones you can see so much nicer and easier to pull off and it would save my fingers and I would greatly appreciate that. And for like this pad, when you lean, you can see like there's no real gaps here either when you're leaning against the post. There is a bit here and that's more of the shape, but down here is pretty good. And the whole thing, while it doesn't like, it's so soft and it moves as you can see, when you're leaning and stuff, it doesn't feel like it's going anywhere and it still feels stable with that calf wing. No matter where the weight is on your leg, if it's on the knee, if it's like coming back, the pad feels very balanced because of that pillow kind of just pushing everything down. So even though it's a soft wing, and kind of a whole soft thing. It doesn't ever feel like you're like really moving anywhere. It's always very stable. The other thing too is when you lift your knee, because there's no knee strap here, obviously you can get a knee strap as well, but because there's no knee strap and because that pillow is still pushing down, the pad stays pretty like much on the ice more than if that wasn't there because your whole leg would start pulling up. Even though the boot is really connected, it still stays and seals pretty good. So there's a few times where I was kind of mid movement like this and I felt like the puck would slide under and even if this looks like it's under a little bit and there is a gap, on down here there isn't because of that pillow. So this part starts to come off but the pillow down the shin stays down so even when I was moving I was like oh no I'm not sealed, my knee's not down like this. I did make the save still and I noticed that sealed a lot better than some pads like Warrior is an example and like the Bauer ones without that pillow kind of do that too so when you pull up it pulls it all up but this kind of like the optics seals pretty decently down there because of that pillow. Now, one thing on this pad that I kind of want to call out and that's like craftsmanship and durability and stuff. Now, obviously there's a ton of wear on this and this isn't really a ton of wear. It's just like the this is supposed to wear down as you can see and there's a little bit right here. So this could be extended a bit, but this wear bar is designed to wear and these pads are a demo pad. So they're passed around a lot. You don't know how much they're abused. The amazing thing about this pad and the amazing thing about this company is Dennis does equipment repair and he makes his own gear too, but he does like glove mods and he does mods to things and he stands by his work so like so much. Whereas some companies are good for warranty and stuff. Dennis will take this and fix this. I'm not saying he'll do it for free, but this pad can be 10 years old and he'll fix it like that, right? And he stands behind his work and he makes sure things work for you and he wants to make things work for you. And honestly, that's kind of going above and beyond and why I think the higher price tag on these is kind of worth it is because you're getting something that you don't just get by walking into a store and kind of buying Bauer stuff. You're actually talking to the person who's making them. You can make adjustment on things. You can get thicker or thinner pillows, for example, if you want, and you can swap those out. You can swap out different liners if you want something thicker or like need a change there. So that is kind of an awesome little experience that you don't get anywhere else. And why I think that this is giving you something different than like some of those other companies. Now, obviously you can go to a Kineski or JRZ and you get closer to those, the people making them or talking to the people making them. But generally speaking, from my experience, I haven't had like the discussions with any of those people like I have with Dennis and none of them have really like it talked about the idea of, Oh, well, I want to see my old pads back in so I can modify them or fix them or change them for you. No one has ever brought that up ever. 
the idea of these not being like a one and done person product and like piece of gear is pretty awesome. And it's, it's nice to hear. And this is kind of like, so I got to give Dennis huge props for that. And that's why I kind of don't have a problem with these being a little bit more expensive because these aren't a thing that you look to buy and just use for a year and a half. They're worn out. They're done. You're looking to buy these and use them for a long time. So overall, I am very happy I got to try a pair of Factory Mad and Dennis's Proto Pads. There's obviously things I would change on these to make them work exactly right for me and to be like perfect for me. But the fact that me, someone who wears an XX stiff, everything I can get my hands on, wore these and enjoyed my time with them and instantly noticed the benefits of them and how they work and why they work and what they do well, and how like they're very unique in what they do should say a lot kind of i really hope brings or turns some people to this company and to these pads and really make people like take a hard look at them what dennis is doing with kind of like the reusability of this pad and the modification ability with this pad and keeping these things lasting forever and ever and ever is very impressive and honestly i love to see that you always have a used market for stuff and if this thing if you could like find a pair of these find out what the size of the pad was, see if it'll work for you. Or if it doesn't work for you, send them back to Dennis. Dennis would modify them to make them work for you. Like I love that idea instead of just turning out new product over and over and over again. If these things can get a, a extended life and keep using them over and over, that's a great thing too. And you definitely get more of a value out of that than just buying a new set of gear type thing. Obviously I buy new sets of gear all the time. It's a hobby of mine, but this, I love the idea behind this. The quality on this stuff is exceptional. That he really stands behind his work and he cares. And that's great to see in the industry and great to see on a set of gear. I really want to recommend these to a whole like assortment of people. One, if you like a soft pad, like Vaughn, uh, Vaughn is like basically the only soft pad company now, or honestly like Warriors. This pad is just great for it. Like it really feels really connected to your leg. It feels like what you want. And it's a very interesting pad in that sense. Even if you like a stiff pad, like myself, using this was great. And it didn't ever, besides that thigh rise goal, and besides like above the knee part, well, basically above this part, this pad worked for me really well. My movements felt great. Everything felt really comfortable. The pads felt really connected to me, which is something that you kind of don't feel that often. It was very interesting and it worked really well. I would love to have this, like a set of these in my collection. I'd obviously have to custom all this up and get like plywood in here to make the, this part the way I want, but everything down here and just how this all works together is great idea. And it's totally out there compared to everyone else, but it works. And again, I want to reiterate this again and again, if someone who loves an X stiff Bauer put this on and had a, like a, enjoyed their time with it, felt the benefits of it like that. It says a lot. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully it was helpful. It was certainly eye opening to me getting these pads, trying them on and seeing how they all worked. If you buy this gear or look at this gear because of this video, please reach out to Dennis, let him know. It just shows appreciation from my end and it'd be greatly appreciated. If you want to support the channel, you're buying hockey equipment anyways. And if you're in the US, check out the links in the description to Pure Hockey and Pure Goalie. If you're in Canada, check out the links to Hockey Supremacy. Clicking those links, making a purchase gives me a kickback. So I keep buying more gear and doing gear reviews and making content like this. Otherwise, if you want to support the channel, check out Patreon, buy me a coffee. Everything through there comes again right back into the channel and be greatly appreciated. Thank you very much for watching this video. You're watching hockeyreviews.ca.